Hey everybody, what's up and welcome to Shooting the Shit Uncensored. I am your host, Piers Austin, and I am from Multi-Continental Wrestling Alliance. I just want to send special thanks to Generational Wrestling Society, WCW Nation, and love those wrestling belts for allowing me to stream in their, this show in their groups uh, and allowing my audience to be that much bigger. Uh, also, just wanted to do a special mention to our uh, sponsors, uh, which are, oh, there you go. Uh, special thanks to our sponsors, Signal Studios, who is a recording studio in Sydney, Australia. They do great sort of sounds, recording space. Uh, if you need music sent to you as well, you want to get into sort of rapping or singing, I don't know, whatever it is you want to do, uh, contact Signal Studios, find them on Facebook. Also, Mayan Belts. Mayan Belts are the premium belt maker in the world today. Uh, if you need any custom championship belt or any of your favorite current belt that you see on wrestling TV, contact Mayan Belts. Also, uh, you can contact Eddie Williams at uh, Mayan Belts and he'll make sure to look after you. So also A-Rock Designs, my friend uh, Ashley Rodriguez's business, she makes cups, keychains, tumblers, hoodies, shirts, you name it, she makes it. And she does a lot, uh, a, a great spin on it as well. Her cups are amazing. I've got three on order and I'll be showing everyone when they come in. But uh, guys, without further ado, I wanna bring in my guest this evening. His name is TNT Greg Bounds. Greg, hey, thank you, you doing? Doing? Hey, thank you very much for coming. How are you, brother? Oh, I'm really good, man. I'm really good. Just uh, been trying to get through this coronavirus uh, sort of uh, stage of life and, uh, and keep on keeping on. You know how it is. Yeah, no, absolutely. I uh, get where it's coming from. And, you know, how's uh, everything been? I mean, obviously, uh, for those who don't know, you are the promoter and owner of the AWF here in Sydney. Um, you know, how how has this coronavirus really affected, you know, you guys and, and your shows? Well, it's put everything to a standstill. It's it's affected yeah. it dramatically. Um, you know, like we just come off a few shows for the Supernova Pop Culture Convention. So we uh, ventured to uh, Melbourne. We had a, had a big uh, sort of showing there and then we're on the Gold Coast. Um, so two weekends of really big crowds, you know, uh, two-day events so um you know lots of different people seeing the action lots of different people you know um interacting and, and a lot of matches you know each each day there's there's probably you know eight or so matches you know we do a section at, at uh 12 2 and 4 each day so it's a busy time um for for, for you know like uh for, for the wrestlers and just organizing the show and just getting everything together um, you know a lot of, lot of cooperation which is great a lot of um you know things that are just behind the scene that go go into those shows to keep them moving so yeah that was it was like a really busy time and then pretty much like right on the on the on the, the last day of that you know the um government was starting to bring in a lot of you know heavier warnings about you know the the, the COVID-19 situation and, and really the social distancing was becoming a, a lot bigger thing and then you know pretty much by the end of that week all the 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 big statements had come down we, we had a show <clears throat> scheduled for the following uh week on a friday uh which is just going to be in our, our mothership studios sort of which has kind of become a bit of a home venue for us in in sydney um, you know, we've been selling that out regularly and, and just, just kind of creating a regular show uh, in close to the city every every sort of two or three months. Um, but, yeah, as it went, you know, as the, as the week went on, the, the restrictions became a lot tighter and we kind of, you know, we came to the decision, well, it's, it's you know, just in, in a couple of days beforehand, like two days before, we kind of said, well, you know, at the start of that week, we were wanting to run it and then kind of as the situation got more serious and the, the government you know, sort of said that, uh, you know, it's probably probably coming that it's going to be uh, a, a big shutdown on, on events, anything over, you know, I believe at the time it might have been 500, but then it went down to 100. So it was kind of like, well, it, yeah, we can't really run anyway. So we, we decided to, to pull the pin. So, yeah, from there it's affected everything, like our training. We, we haven't been having training sessions uh, for, for the area of school of pro wrestling, so that's kind of on ice at the moment. The uh, you know we're still keeping in contact with the, with the students we've got and, and whatnot, and and you know just you know every week I'll send them a, a little thing here. Make sure you're doing your exercises and, and do this and that. But it's only it's all news, so it's only been in the last couple of weeks that this all happened, obviously. So yeah, yeah we were going to see how long this is going to go for, and 
obviously we're going to have to develop some other ways to um, you know keep things going. We're, we're doing a lot of work behind the scenes with the um, video stuff at the moment, so I'm, I'm pretty much every day just getting some of our old catalogue, um, starting to try to digitise that in, into the files versus off DVDs. Uh, and eventually some of that will go up on a on like an online on-demand thing. Some of it will go on, a little bit of it will go on YouTube, but a little bit of it will, will go on like sort of, you know, uh, an on-demand style service um, to, to build that up again. We used to have a thing called AWF On Demand, but I kind of closed it down because it was taking a lot of a lot of time and energy and not not really getting that much. Like it was covering itself and a little bit more, but for the, for the hours and the time um, that was being put into it, especially by one one young fellow that was, was helping me out, it was kind of like, uh, kind of, kind of, felt sorry for him for doing this stuff and that many people kind of you know get into it it is what it is independent wrestling sometimes you know you can you have a great product and put it all out there but you know getting people to pay for it when there's so much free stuff out there and there's so many yeah. you know, torrent sites and leech sites and and, and and you know all the other stuff is you know multi-million dollar productions whereas you know if you're just on a, on a local uh production you know with a few thousand dollars it's, it's, it's kind of a, it's, it's a different you know different world sort of thing so yeah it, it is what it is but uh, yeah so, so wrestling is, 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 as such is, is kind of like inter, internationally, you know, like even Japan, they were, they're probably the last ones to, to just, just pull the pin. And now, you know, there's still a couple of companies, the bigger ones that have TV obligations, you know, as you see from WWE as well, they're, mm-hmm. you know, running a few events just to, in front of, you know, cameras and, and empty buildings just to, to keep the TV side of things going and keep keep some kind of entertainment going. But, uh, yeah, as far as uh, a lot of the promotions that are just, uh, you, you know, bread and butter, you know, run a lot event try to you know generate a few dollars from that and, and just keep the ball spinning um yeah it's it's it's, it's been uh, yeah, it's been a bit of a shutdown especially in places like australia you know the, the, the laws mm, yeah. have come in and they've just said look you're not able to run anything because of the, the potential spread of virus so yeah, yeah. It's, it's a it's a crazy crazy world we're living in. you know now that the laws are such you can't even have you know I think it's two people go out in to get more than two, more than two you know, yeah. gatherings and stuff like that. So, so yeah, there's no way that anything pro wrestling uh, like uh, related as far as live sort of stuff can go on. So yeah, we're in limbo. <laughs> it, it, it does. And it makes it so much harder, especially for the, for, you know, obviously the smaller promotions out there. I mean, you know, the, the, the larger promotions out there have the funds to sort of keep them afloat past, um, you know, sure. you know th- this period, but you know, obviously, you know, there's a lot of promotions. Like even you look at, you know, one of the major promotions in the United States at the moment, Game Changer. Yep. You know, you know that guy is like almost like lost everything. You know what I mean? And you know the the money that you outlay, you know, for big shows and, and stuff like that, as as you would pretty much as you would you know mm-hmm. understand from from years of being a promoter. Um, um, but you know, it, it just really comes down to obviously how you know these companies are going to be able to survive, and you know, hats off to those those companies that are able to do you know the, those empty arena shows because you know it's still putting some sort of product out there. But you know, you have to be able to to, to have the funds to even do that to begin with. You know, and, and a lot goes yeah, into or the venues to let you do it as well. You know, like the, the thing is in, in Australia, you, you couldn't even get a venue to let you do that. Unless you yeah. had your own, own venue, and even then, the, like with the, with the the laws going on now, you, you you're just not supposed to have groups of people together. There, there. Yeah, you know, I, I hear bits and pieces of the news. I I, I don't sometimes have it, all the information, but but you know, I'll hear that you know the police will, will even come and, and they're giving big fines to people that are congregating now, which is which is you know, um, it, it's serious stuff. You know what I mean? So yeah, like I, I guess the the virus has become a, a very serious thing. You know, there's a lot of speculation of how you know dangerous the whole thing is but there are places where a lot of people are dying and, and the hospitals are got people you know that are sick so it has to be taken serious especially for like older people like i'm sometimes mm. around uh, older people so you know even going out a lot and, and coming back there, there's a bit of you know whether it's paranoia or whether it's you know just partial sort of like you know just being scared from the from the media there's a lot of mm. media you know, pounding, pounding, pounding that it's it's the end of days and whatever virtually. Um, so it's it's kind of a thing that you know, yeah, yeah, it's probably it's fear, yeah, and I, 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 yeah, fear, fear campaigns definitely, but um, you know, you don't know what else is going on, but but as far as you know, just just trying to, I guess, just fall in line and keep keep on moving forward. Yeah, the the, the indies that are 
running those shows uh yeah god bless them um mm. yeah just just uh yeah something you know it'd be great if some people would get you know be at home and support those guys because they're they're really really trying to i guess stay afloat some of them like even for myself you know like i, I don't do anything else i haven't done anything else ever i do pro wrestling i run wrestling shows i wrestle um so now it's shut down i'm gonna go and i'll get some savings but it's gonna run out <laughs> especially the way that you know like, you know the food prices they're not going down the everything is you know, I still got to pay rent. I still got to, you know, you know, my, I got, I got three, I got two children and, and, a, and, a, and a, an extra child. So I got, and a, and a, and a partner. So I got, uh, got three kids to feed and every week you still got all these bills coming in and, you know, so yeah, it's, it's a, it's, it's a struggle for pro wrestling. <laughs> yeah, no, it definitely is. But how long do you, have you been in pro wrestling for? Well, here's a, here's, a, here's a nice nice fact for you. Uh, just uh, a couple of days ago, it was my 25th year uh, as like an in-ring professional wrestler. I started uh, training in 1994, uh, which was kind of like my last year of school sort of thing. Uh, and then, yeah, be began wrestling uh, the, the next year, which was uh, in, in sort of April. I, I believe it was the 5th of April. Um, yeah, 1995 is when I had my first match uh, at Ingleburn RSL. Um, yeah, and then, and then so yeah, 25 years quietly uh, just popped up a couple of days ago. So I'm quite uh, proud of that. It's a quarter of a century, so it makes me feel bloody old. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but you know, it's. Uh, so you said Ingleburn RSL. Who, what, who was the promotion? Do you remember? Uh, it was called Worldwide Wrestling. Um, it was run by uh, two gentlemen called uh, – uh, one was Ken Dunlop and the other guy was Wayne Pickford. Uh, both of those guys, uh, you know, wrestled for many, many years. They were kind of like remnants, I guess, of the World Championship Wrestling TV era. Um, they were trained by Roy Heffner and Al Costello. Um, they, you know, wrestled around the club circuit. Uh, they were like a, a tag team, but they also were the promoters of that, that uh, sort of promotion. So, yeah, some, some fine men. Um, uh, you know, they, they wrestled over in England once or twice um, on a couple of tours and, and, and sort of were, were, you know, a real uh, tidy tag team. And, and they even trained like some of the local wrestlers, like like is often the case, you know, with the local promotion. They'll have like a training session with us. So, so when I first started, um, Lofty and uh, uh, and, and the Dazzler, they, they kind of ran some training from time to time and I, I attended a few of their sessions and, and sort of learned a few holds and moves back in the day and uh, I never got to wrestle Ken one-on-one -on -one, but I wrestled uh, Wayne a couple of years later. Ken kind of retired a little bit earlier than uh, Wayne Pickford but uh, I, I got to wrestle Wayne a couple of times and, and was, was friends with him and yeah, it was. It's uh, uh, yeah, but it's it's kind of like there's not many of us left from that era that that are still yeah. in wrestling now, sort of thing. Even that sort of very um, sort of mid nineties uh, wrestling in Australia, sort of thing. And and you know that, but like I said, uh, Dunlop and Tickford were kind of like the remnants um, of the, the sort of seventies WCW TV wrestling. They were kind of just you know around it then but not so much on tv but they it was kind of coming off and then they were kind of coming in so and uh, those guys you know even like you could say uh, i don't know but like andy harpers was another guy that was promoting around that time andy he was animal actually on, on some of the animal harpers yeah he was he was on some of the shows back then so yeah you know and then it was kind of um you know, sort of off TV and, and, you know, like Steve Rackman and, and some of these these kind of uh, Australian icon sort of promoters and wrestlers were still kind of loosely involved in, in a local scene. But, uh, but yeah, um, Pickford and Dunlop kind of, kind of picked things up from there, you know. We were actually talking back before we went live about, um, you know, names, a few, a few names blast from the past and Wayne Pickford, I remember seeing him wrestle and, as we mentioned, I you know we have a mutual friend who who was uh, who, who wrestled for a while, and um, I remember going to shows and seeing Wayne Pickford at the shows and just going, God damn, he's one intimidating play. He's just this big dude. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was like an eighteen-year-old kid, so I was like, no, yeah. it, 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 very very vocal and very confident, you know, very, you know, like, uh, yappy, you know, so yeah, the, uh, the, the, they will, he, uh, later in, in AWF when he, when he, uh, like he used to be called Lofty Pickford, uh, when he was with, with Ken Dunlop, but, uh, I, I, I pretty much, uh, when he came to AWF, he, he actually worked in prisons. So when he first came in, um, 
he, you know, I, I formed AWF in about 99 and he kind of been wrestling some, some shows for the IWA, which I was, which I was part of sort of from about 97 to, to, to 99. Um, and, and Wayne, uh, kind of was working in the prisons and I thought oh, it would be great to have him as like the warden type thing. So I called him Punisher Pickford. Um, and, and then that was a name that he, he stuck with from there, you know, so, uh, that was always a cool little, uh, little, little gimmick. So yeah, I, I get that, uh, he, he would kind of be, be a little bit intimidating because he, he is actually quite a, quite a tough, tough man, you know, he, yeah. working in the prisons for a long time, you, you have to be able to put up with a bit of crap, I'm sure. So. <laughs> but you know, you know what? He, he was, he was always nice. You know what I mean? Like oh, I was just, a, I, I was just a young kid and I obviously, you know, I was friends with a guy who was one of the boys, essentially. I wasn't one of the boys, but I was kind of like his mascot. <laughs> you know, this kid's yeah, mascot. Like, hey man, I'm coming along to a wrestling show, you know, like, Sweet. but, um, you know, but yeah, like Pickford was always, always a cool dude, man. He, he was always cool. Like I said, intimidating as hell. Like I'd be like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, but but, uh, but, a, but, a, but, a, but a good person, you know, like, um, oh, it, 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 it was, it was like quite, quite heavily involved with the church as well. Not that that makes you a good person, but mm. you know, quite often people, people that are, you know, they probably got some kind of uh, morals and qualities. So uh, yeah, uh, Wayne, Wayne is a gentleman. Yeah. Oh, 100% agree with you. 100% agree with you. But uh, so you mentioned you started the AWF in '99. What, Correct. what? So, so what was the the reasoning for launching your own promotion? What was the 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 factor? Went, you know what? I can be, I can run this whole thing. I can promote. I can train. I can put the shows together. You know, I, I'm going to do this. What was the what was the driving factor for you? Well, there was a couple, a couple of things, you know. Like I got, I was, it was about ninety eight, might have even, yeah, it was, it was kind of like late ninety eight. Um, I'd been, I, I was like a, I guess I was the third owner in the IWA, but um, I got hurt at one of their shows. Um, I was wrestling Mark Mercedes, who we, we, we'd uh, uh, spoken about previously. Um, we're in a match, and and things were happening, and and uh, I, I got a back body drop over the top rope. Um, which is quite a big bump as it is. Um, I thought he was going to pull the rope down, but but he he back body dropped me. It was just a, like a a thing that happened in the match. But the, the the ring that we were using was quite high. It was like a modified boxing ring, so the the actual uh, sort of ring apron is higher in those kind of rings. So what happened was I, it was like falling out of a one story building. You know what I mean? So by the time I, I flew, you ever see that? You know. Uh, Shawn Michaels versus Kevin Nash match where he flies up and takes that back body drop. Well, not quite as big as that, but you get the idea. He's kind of, you know, right up in the air. But as it turned out, you know, there's no pads on the floor. There's no kind of thing. So um, I, I landed on the floor, shattered my ankle, um, shattered oh. the, the, the bone and the ligaments. It was a total mess. So I, I ended up, you know, um, having to go out in an ambulance. Um, match match was a tag match so in the match i kind of called to the to the the, the partner what to do and, and he kind of you know finished out the match then i went to a hospital and then you know it took me a good six weeks to you know get the ankle to mend and then another six weeks of, of rehabilitation so there was a lot of time where where you know and then after that it was still a bit of time where i couldn't do anything so then the other one of the other owners tyrone was going oh well you're not doing anything now blah 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 Tax is coming up. We might, you might be out. I'm like, what? I was like, fucking hell, man. I got hurt, you know. I, I paid a paid a third of the ring, and you know, like all this kind of stuff. Yeah. I was like, man, well, just tell me what you want me to do, and I'll do it from home, you know. Like, so he was, you know, you put a nap, and he was a bit of a shady guy, but you know, like times have passed, and what is this? This is you know another lifetime ago. So yeah. Anyway, so so as it was, you know, they were sort of edging me out. So I said, okay, well, in this time, I'll just you, you don't want me, all right? Well, I'll try and do my Think so. We I got speaking to a guy that, that had shown interest to, to invest some money and, and help out with the wrestling. I said, okay, well, what can we do? Let's have a meet up. And uh, another friend of mine, we, we met up and had a chat. And he said, okay, we'll see what we can do. Here's here's some ideas. I said, oh, okay, well, I can try and do all this stuff. And I said, okay, well, we'll just do mine. And then I, I came to the other guy. And said, hey, do you guys want to be in part of this? This is what I got. 
And then Mercedes and Tyre said, oh, no, 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 we're not, you know, we're going to do ours. I said, okay, well, can I have the, the, the ring money back, the, the money from the, from that? They go, oh, yeah, sure, sure, no worries. It never got it, of course. I had to ask 50 times. And then, oh, no, you've got it back in ring hire. You've got it. It's like, oh, it's bullshit, you know. But anyway, that, that, that's life, you know. So I just yeah. kind of you know, cut my losses and just went on and did my own thing and then, you know, never looked back, you know. Um, so we, we, we started off big, you know, the guy, uh, friend of uh, uh, the investor, Rob Jones, he came in and, and had some big ideas. Um, some of them went well, some of the, you know, was, was, uh, was, was hard to, I guess, ex execute on such a sh short timeline. Um, so yeah, it, it, it had its successes. It had its, um, you know, sort of things that didn't go go to plan, but uh, like anything, you know, it it, uh, it it did some interesting things for the wrestling in Australia at the time. We we did a few shows where we had really big crowds. Um, you know, we, we, in our initial tours, we had like Marty Janetti over. Um, I remember that. I remember. I remember going to those shows actually. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, right, right. I remember yeah. I was at that show. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, we, we did we did a lot, you know, um, and then, you know, we had uh, uh, Super Dragon uh, who, who went on to uh, run Pro Wrestling Gorilla in, in California in the USA. Uh, you know, we had, uh, you know, Sabu, Chris Candido, uh, you know, a guy called the Gothic Knight, a massive sort of Canadian guy that, you know, looked like the, the, the ultimate warrior almost, you know, but with, with a, with a, with a sword, <laughs> um, you know, we, we, we had, we had some good, good, uh, wrestling stuff going on. You know, we had some good local, like we, we mentioned, uh, Lofty Pickford, he was on, uh, on some of the initial shows. We had Vulcan, we had, uh, you know, myself, my brother, um, you, you know, some of the other, we had a guy called, uh, Brian Cannon was on some of the shows. Who, who oh, and these days. He was from uh, uh, Canberra, wasn't he, Brian Canberra? Correct. That's right. Yep, yep, yep. From Canberra originally. Um, he, he sort of, uh, uh, you know, wrestles a lot of independent shows in Japan, and, and uh, he's the, uh, I'm not sure the spelling, but the Ryuku dog these days or something like that. Um, Is he still so, wrestling? I thought he, was, I thought he got really badly injured and, and, and retired. No, he's definitely right? still wrestling. He's still around. He was actually in Australia just a couple of months ago, just, just come back for a little visit to visit the family, I'm assuming. And, and just uh, catch up with a few people, but uh, yeah, he's the he has a thing called the Mad Dog Club, I, I believe, over there, which is just like a, I guess, like a, a localized version of the the Bullet Club, but a Mad Dog Club. <laughs> he's the, he used to be called his nickname was Dingo uh, for for many years, so I, I guess that's where that uh, MA is from. But but yeah, yeah, good luck to Campbell. You know, he was uh, he was a part of the early IWA and AWF, and uh, yeah, went went over to Japan and and. Uh, uh, just you know, wrestled Indies. Uh, he wrestled in Osaka Pro for for quite some time, um, and and uh, yeah, a bunch, bunch of other Indies. And you know, he's 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 wrestled some of his heroes, which is great. You know, he got to wrestle uh, alongside Jushin Liger one time. Um, oh, yeah, I know. remember he he wrestled a few big names back in the day as well. But when I yeah, from my memory, I always thought he he retired early. I don't know. No, don't know. no, no. He's, he's still going. He's still he's definitely right. still going. So you've also been training wrestlers for, for a number of years as well. So yes. one of our questions is actually from Christy, who is okay. one of the admin for uh, Multi-Continental Wrestling Alliance. She just wants to know how many people contact you each week saying, I want to be a wrestler and think just because they watch it that they can do it. Well, I, I don't know an exact number. It varies from week to week. <laughs> Um, around WrestleMania time, they, they come out of the woodwork. Um, uh, so I, I got one just like probably about twenty minutes before we we uh, we came to came to chatting here tonight, Pierce. Here. So um, yeah, you know, like there, there's a lot of uh, people that that who talk the talk, but when it comes to actually you know taking the steps to actually do it, um, they're they're sometimes a little bit uh, you know further apart. You know what I mean? So you know, generally, I, I think that. Um, I, I don't know if it's just the genre, the like wrestling kind of maybe some of the fans are a bit dreamerish or something like that. And this, this isn't a, a knock. This is just more a, a statistical analysis on my parts of things. So, so generally I get a lot of inquiries and then, you know, 
you, you kind of fish out who just wants to talk about wrestling or is just some young person that's interested in wrestling but just wants to find out about it or, or just wants to talk to someone that's in wrestling. Um, yeah. There's a bit of that. And then once once that kind of gets weeded out, and it's not weeded out in a bad way, it's just, okay, it is what it is. You, you know, I'm happy to talk to anybody that, that, that loves wrestling and if they're keen not to wrestle eventually, maybe they'll come to a show and, and support the show and they'll, you know, maybe just be part of the – Oh, Lazar, he's a legend. <laughs> oh, you, you know Lazar, do you? Of course, yeah. He's, he's, he was at the AWF Queensland shows uh, probably just under six months ago when we were up in Queensland uh, uh, for, for some events up there. Um, so, yeah, he's, he's uh, we had one at the Capulture RSL where him and his mate uh, came along. So, what, oh, what's right. the question? Mad Dog Club are a pretty cool faction. Yeah, awesome. Australia chapter with the yeah, yeah. Australian Wolf, exactly. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, Australian Wolf's a, a, a long time wrestling friend of mine as well, and they've uh, they've been doing really well up there. They've had some some big shows for the QWA where they've had you know like uh, at least five hundred people to the shows, which is great. Big big production with big sort of um, you know like uh, stage setups and, and, and big sort of uh, truss lighting grids over the over the uh, over the ring to, to, to give a give a really good production. So yeah, they're 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 loving their wrestling up there and, and, and enjoying it, which is great. But uh, yeah, yeah. But you know what? We're talking about AWF and how you guys started out, and yeah. I can actually remember back in 1999. Seeing the show, like seeing the advertisements for AWF on television, and yep. like in my mind, like back then, ninety nine, I was seventeen years old, and ah. wrestling was probably at one of the probably the biggest peak that it's it's had besides I think the early eighties and or the mid eighties. Sure. And I was absolutely like, as soon as I saw AWF, I'm like, "There's an Australian WWF? What?" And my my brain was just exploding and. Yeah, obviously, you know, getting to go to some of those those, those shows uh, at seventeen and seeing it, and you know, and I think we, are, as I said to you earlier, I actually was uh, in high school and I was doing had to do an assignment on business, and I actually contacted AWF and spoke to you. I rem I remember, yeah, I definitely remember seeing you, and you're like, I'm like, yeah, dude, can you like send me information? Like, I want to, can I come to your office and see you like this? And you're like, yeah, yeah there's no office. <laughs> No, well, we did have an office. We, we actually did have an office in, in 99 and 2000. Like we, we were in between at one stage, but we, we, did, we had a, a really good office over in, in, it was in Mount Druid, but we did have a, like a, a wrestling ring um, set up there. And we had a, a shop called WrestleMart where we sold, because wrestling was popular, man. Wrestling was like the, every kid wanted those shirts and those figures and stuff. So we had a little shop there and did okay for a while. You know, I, I had a guy, like one of the other wrestlers was working in the, no, not the one at Parramatta. That was that was the T-shirt shop, World Order T-shirts. We were at, at Mount Druitt. We had our, our training set up there and I had a, a thing, but we knew those guys, you know. Um, and Shay, hey, he's, a, he's an AWF guy. He's a, he's a champion. We get to get Shay drop in. What are some of the crazy sort of reactions you've seen over the years? Oh, we'll get to that. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah, the, um, the, 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 the humble beginnings were, were, were quite, uh, you know, quite well put together, actually. The, um, the AWF, we had a shop called WrestleMart. Um, so we had, you know, uh, we actually had a deal for a little while with, with that, the shop at Parramatta World Order T-shirts where they would, because they were bringing out a lot of shirts and following them out to all the markets and stuff like that. So they were getting at a good price. So, um, we had a bunch of stuff coming in from the States as well, but sometimes we were just like, well, you know, we, we if you're getting in a bunch of this stuff, you're getting it at a decent price and we can get it off you at a decent price. We'll just have it at our shows and, and, and whatnot and just saves a lot of, lot of in between or just doubling up, get the same stuff sometimes too, you know? So yeah, yeah, yeah. they were, they were uh, big days for the wrestling. They're, they're sort of uh, late, late nineties, early 2000, you know, I, I guess for about 96 through to about, you know, 2003, it was, it was pumping. Yeah, it, it was, was yeah, it definitely was. And you know, I, I think that you know, pro wrestling is you know, has has peaks and troughs, you know, yeah. I mean? like it goes up and down. And I think, like, you know, obviously, the Hulk Hogan thing, wrestling was cool, you know, it gets to like the you know, mid 90s, 94 to you know, wrestling sort of plateaus a little bit, and then the attitude era spikes. Then blows, yeah. and I think we're we're probably at another spike now, where where wrestling is probably at an all time high. 
um, as far as, you know, take the coronavirus out of it, of course. But, mm. you know, wrestling ha- has definitely gone through a boom in the last two years and, and has continued to skyrocket, obviously. You've seen there's been a lot of, there's, there's, there has been a lot of interest. I don't, I don't know whether it's fully – it was it was on its way to getting back up there a bit, but the, mm. it just – like this, this way that the world has, has come to right now, as you, as you mentioned, with the, with the coronavirus and just stuff like that, it, it just hopefully it can can get back on track when, when we get back. You know, like uh, I guess the WrestleMania was the last couple of days, and and, and they tried mm. to do a big effort there. I, I haven't watched the whole show, but I've seen little snippets of it. Uh, the, the last couple of days, watched watched two or three of the matches. Uh, from the first event and, and saw the, the the opening match of the of the, the second day, um, and I, it was just kind of like I guess good to still see some kind of representation out there. And I even noticed it was on Channel Seven News. They, they they put the first night some of the highlights. And, you know, it was done you know in the usual sort of sarcastic or, or a bit of a bit of a smart ass sort of remark here and there afterwards. But uh, but but you know some some publicity and some sort of uh, fanfare is always good, even though it wasn't. Like the like I was at the WrestleMania, um, the yeah last year I was at WrestleMania and it was you know another one of those mega ones where it was eighty thousand people or something like that. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah, wrestling has has been you know just just I, I think the explosion of the internet and the indies is really kind of just kind of open things up and, and, and given wrestling that extra layer that it's not just, just WWE. And then WWE yeah. is also running its own independent wrestling now with NXT and NXT UK and, and yeah. you know, whatever other little sub projects that, that they've got worked out. And, you know, like I'd be surprised if they had like a, a lot more of those uh, sort of film matches now. And I wouldn't be surprised if at some stage in, in the, in, not straight away, but in the near future, they'll run a, a show, which is all matches like that. You know what I mean? Or, or, or run like, a try to like make, make a movie out of something like the undertaker that they, they could try to make him a movie star and, and or, or like a weekly, weekly TV show, like with, with theme stuff like that. I would not be surprised at all, you know, especially the undertaker now that like, like they, they probably had a bit of, you know, trepidation. Like if he had another match that didn't go so well, with the fans in a live situation, it, it could have really, really like ended him in not a good way. But at least in that environment, they had that that kind of situation where they could look after as well as they could, really get the character work going on. They, you know, they could. It, it wasn't so much like a wrestling. There weren't suplexes in that thing. I did, I did catch the the boneyard match, but you know, it was all punches and kicks. It was really, you know, well shot. It looked like oh, a cool oh. little movie. Like I don't know whether it, in the world of wrestling to me, like I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like when I see this kind of stuff, it's like, what, so does that count as a match? Like the, the you know, like, you, not, not the statistics really mean anything, but, but you know what I mean? Like it just kind of like, you, you know, you know, to... I mean, I like the, the whole thing, like I watched, I watched that match and I went, if I just saw a fight scene in a movie or a TV series, then that was really fucking cool. Yeah. The fact that if that, if I had to sit there and say, Hey, my friend here, you've never watched wrestling before. Watch this. This is wrestling. That yeah. would not be the first match that I go to. No. But in saying that, if we remember back a few years when the Hardy Boys had the, that their, their compound matches, yeah. they really started that sort of theatric in their – it was the exact same thing as, as that, you know. It, yeah. and, and even that, I kind of see, would see some of those, like, old WCW mini-movies while they weren't actually advertised as matches. They were just kind of like the wrestlers walking on beaches and, and little midgets running around and all this kind of crazy stuff. They're, they're, they're more promotions for the pay-per-views. Even, yeah. even that could be a precursor to it in many ways. But, but you know, all, all those things aside, I, I just – I don't know, like it's a, it's a different different look on wrestling, but but it, it just kind of I don't know, it it, it kind of messes with the formula a bit. Like to have that on WrestleMania, like I, I know it's a different like year this year with the COVID nineteen and all the rest of it, but it just to say like like so now you can pre tape these matches and put it all together, and that's a, a WrestleMania match. It's, like, it's just a bit, a bit strange. To me, you know? even then, like I but, think but this whole thing was strange. There was, there was like you know wrestling matches in front of no fans. This is like not often being done. Like sure, there's been a few you know famous empty arena brawls. Like I, I guess. Uh, 
I think uh, Jerry Lawler and Terry Funk did one back in the day and, you know, Foley and, and The Rock did one. But they were kind of obviously very different circumstances, but, but really cool for what they were. But, uh, yeah, man, it's, 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 it's wacky days, that's for sure. And then these, uh, these movies, they're, like, they're, they're going to have their fans and they're going to have their people. Like, I'm sure someone like Jim Cornette's, you know, mind is exploding um, as right. some of the old, old school people would be. But, uh, you know, it, it's... Uh, um, yeah, it's, it, it, it is what it is. I, I think they look really cool, but uh, yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. like when the makers is involved as well too. Then, then there's like always like these like movie magic things. Like there's that scene where you know AJ had him in the in the in the gravy put him. Yeah, like he built to that, and then all of a sudden he was standing behind him going, "Ha ha ha!" He's going like. Argh. And then the thunder and the lightning was coming. I don't know. It's all gimmick and it's, it's wrestling. And you know, like I, 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 as a somebody not watching wrestling, I'm like, oh, this is fucking cool or whatever. But in a wrestling show, like that's supposed to be wrestling, they're, they're making movies, as Vince would say. So, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and and that's the thing. It's like, uh, <laughs> look, it, it can be entertaining to to someone, but if you're a hardcore wrestling fan, you're looking at that going. Didn't yeah. he retire a few years ago? <laughs> you know what um, I mean? like, yeah. Wrestling retirement students, what are they? Yeah, yeah. Just, ask, just ask Terry Funk, bro. Come on now. But yeah, yeah, they they were yeah, Ric Flair or whoever else, but uh, yeah, that's that's uh yeah, that's the biz, I guess. <laughs> exactly. So AWF shows. Are you <laughs> are you uh, in charge of the book? Do you have someone booking the matches for you? No, I I I, I run it all. Yeah. I pretty much yeah. Do it all, man. I, I will set the show up. I'll book the venue. I'll do the the events, do the matches, do everything. Yep. Do the music, do whatever needs to be done. Yeah. Wow. So you really are a one stop shop of professional wrestling. In right? many ways, but, but, but you know, like there's always help. There's always help along the way. Like, um, you know, some, some, you know, on the day of a show, for example, you know, like I can't do the whole ring myself and do the whole thing. So, the, you know, there's some of the wrestlers, some of the, the trainees, some of the, the helpers come and, you know, we blow the ring on the truck, we put it on the truck, we take it to the building, we unload it, we set the ring up, we set the merchandise up, we set the music up, we get everything to the screens. If it's, a, if it's a video place or if it's a music place, we work out what needs to be done and then everything's in place and then, you know, get ready to open the doors and here we go again, you know, it's uh, the run sheet in the back, you do your, do your bouts and hopefully people stick to times and uh, we, we usually do a little intermission just so people get a break and then come back for a second half, hopefully uh, put on a good, uh, you know, climax to the show and bring them back another time, you know, give, give them the dates for the next one, say, hey, I uh, hope you enjoyed it, tell your friends, you know, uh, in, you know, meet the wrestlers afterwards if 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 some guys are available, and uh, yeah, come back uh, and, and spread the good word. You know, that's incredible. And how do you find you know, obviously, getting storylines and creating storylines for your guys? Is it something that you guys try and create a storyline for that show and telling that really short story, or do you have you know storylines that you really try and plan out over a period of time? where you can do it. I mean, obviously, you know, with independent wrestling, it's hard to really have like a, a big six month program written out uh, and, and planned. But is that something that you guys try and work on? Yeah. Well, well, my shows, it's both. It's both. So I try to do it so that if somebody had just come once, they could get what was going on and it's all in one show, but it's also a, a longer picture. So, you know, there'll be a, a, an angle that, you know, maybe towards the start of the show or, or early in the show that will kind of recap some things. Um, and that way, if somebody hadn't been before, they go, oh, this is, these guys don't like each other and they're probably going to wrestle later on in the show. Um, yeah, so, so there is something going on there or there might be someone come out and do something earlier in the show and, and that will lead to something you know bigger later on or, or, or within that segment to, to, to cause the friction and then it can go on. So if, if the people were here last time, oh yeah, they're, they're still at it. They're, they've got some tension from last time or, oh, we can, we can see that that's just being circulated and it's going to get bigger later on. So yeah, it, it, but both, both uh, sort of ideas are there, you know, to try to, have a show that is a standalone show, but at the same time, there is a bigger picture that, you know, these people are going on and, and there, there are angles that people did want to follow it, you know? Yeah, no, nah, that's fair enough. And, you know, obviously, do you have, do you, how often do you have wrestlers coming up to you going, mate, uh, I ain't doing the J-O-B today, bud. I've got, Not often. Uh, 
I've got my girl in the crowd. No. <laughs> I got some rats. No. Not often, you know. I, I, maybe other places happens a bit more, more. But uh, you know, I got a pretty good crew. Most of the guys get it, which is good. Um, anyone with an ego won't last, or we just, just you know, there's no place for it in, in wrestling. So, um, it, you know, be confident and, and know what you're doing is, is, is you know, what what wrestling's about, and and you know, being part of a team. Once once you're in wrestling for a long time, if you want to remain in in the one. Uh, promotion for, for a period of time. You, you realize you're as part of the team and there's, you know, a, a bigger picture, you know. Um, I, I like to, 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 to think that most of the guys uh, have a pretty good trust in, in what I'm doing or, or, you know, some of them, it's, it's not so much about the storylines. I think for them it's more about, okay, I, I'm going to get get the physical, you know, theater out, out there and, and, and do the, do my wrestling matches and, and, you know, be part of something that's, uh, you know, a group effort that, that, that entertains some people and, and that excites some people. Um, and, and, and they have a blast doing it. So, uh, yeah, you, you know, as, as far as, as storylines and characters goes, yeah, we, we've got plenty of them and we've got, got the, 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 you know, the, the different factions and the different kind of ideas and, and, and try to, try to having a card that has many different, sort of things on it is, is, is also important. I think like, you know, has something to please a lot of people, you know, some people are, are more into like the real sort of physical matches live, or some people might like, um, sort of a bit lighter things, you know, like it, it depends on the kind of event too, you know, like if it's, um, an event where we've got like a lot of children at it, obviously we don't want to go too hardcore. Otherwise it, it's going to turn a lot of people off and, and not, yeah. not bring them back. Or, but if we've got events where it's an adults only event, we'll sometimes, you know, raising the intensity or, or, or the stakes or maybe some kind of gimmicks or, or some kind of, you know, just the, the, the flashiness is different, you know what I mean? Or, or the, or the, 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 um, the, the match types can, some, can sometimes be a little bit more adult themed or a little bit more, you know, heavier hitting or a bit more sort of boisterous. Whereas on a, on a, uh, a lighter hearted show, you know, there might be a bit more comedy involved or there might be a little bit more um, sort of crowd interaction um, on, a, on a sort of friendly personal level sort of thing. So yeah, yeah. You know, it, it varies from crowd to crowd and, and um, from, from show to show. Yep. So those 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 more adult shows. How many times have you really got to sort of you know grab some of the younger guys by the horns and go, hey, he's up? No, you're not doing that spot tonight. Or you know, do you have guys that really want to go out and do some crazy shit and you you, you have to pull them back in sometimes? Or a, a lot of the time, like with with my events, like I I give to an extent like guys a bit of a, an outline what they can't do. Like please don't go out into the crowd and do this. Might be an example, or or don't. You know, um, you can't um, do certain things because it's venues, you know, and it's sometimes the product as well, you know, like so what, what, what we want to uh, project, um, you know, like obviously if, if we've got a, an under 18s, you know, just like a, or, or an open show, we don't want our guys going out there and, and swearing their heads off. You know, it only turns people off or, it, you know, get venues get, you know, word of this and they don't want you back, you know. So, it, it, you know, or you don't want people, you know, out there bleeding all over the place or, or, or spitting and stuff like that in certain places, you know, because it, it, it's unhygienic and, and yeah. it, uh, it's a bad impression for the wrestling. And, and you know, it only takes one person to, to get, uh, you know, a bug or, or especially in this climate right now it's, it's it's going to be intensified when the wrestling goes back you know people people want to want to you know spit and stuff like that even if it's from the you know somebody getting struck and, and the, the spit comes out like in, in a wrestling match it sometimes does yeah. there's going to be more eyes and that kind of stuff um so yeah it's it's a uh, uh yeah it, <coughs> it, it, it can't be the wild wild west everywhere anymore um like where a yeah. lot of places are, are not you know, looking after venues or, or, you know, even some of the guys not looking after venues, you, you know, like leaving, you know, beer all over the place or being doing stupid stuff or, or just abusing the, 
the venues when they wrestle their matches and you know throw themselves into into a bunch of chairs and wrecking chairs for the venue and you know the promoter doesn't want to have to pay for that and 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 the, and the venue and, and they don't want to have to deal with that with the venues when the venues go hey you you've broken some of our stuff or there's a there's a big hole in the wall what the fuck you you know like you're supposed to, you guys you know and then they you got to start talking in public liability or you got to start you know throwing you know, a lot of a lot of independent wrestling shows don't make a lot of money you know or sometimes they don't make any money for some people so um you, you know, like when there's extra bills at the end of the night, the, 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 it, it, it doesn't sit well. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can yeah. imagine, especially for someone like you, who's the one who's forking out the money to put the shows on. And, you know, <sighs> you, you, yeah, you guys don't want you guys doing stupid shit. But, yeah, do you have – do you find a lot of the time it's the venues coming to you going, right, Greg, I don't want to see this, I don't want to see this, this can't happen, this can't happen, or is they just let you have that flexibility to, to run it's your not so much. It's not so much that, like they're coming up and saying, don't do this. And because a lot of the venues don't know what to expect, you know what I mean? Especially if it's their first time, they're, they're kind of just like, okay, well, they're going to trust us that we run a show. We've been running a show for, for over 20 years now. So they're going to, you know, have a bit of like trust in us. And, you know, we, we have insurance and all this kind of stuff. So they, they got, got to have a little bit of peace of mind. But, but you know, I think it's just a common courtesy you know like but there are other people like like there'll be a, sometimes a, a new young promoter that comes in that has one many shows that that might be hell inspired like you know by old ecw or czw or something you know a, a hardcore promotion or they have these ideas and they'll go and let their wrestlers do anything and, and some of the wrestlers love it you, you know like half the wrestlers are crazy guys that love that kind of stuff i, I love that kind of stuff but i know that there's you know i've, I've wrestled some of those guys from ECW, like Sabu and Tommy Dreamer and all that, and, you know, th there's a difference between, you know, taking a table in, in the ring and in a match or, or you know, the, then running out into the crowd and, and smashing light tubes all over the place. And, and, and you know, like uh, uh, if, if that gets done in the wrong place, sometimes it can be bigger problems, not just on the night and not just for that venue, but the, the, those venues sometimes talk or, there, there could be an inquiry if there's if there ever gets to be like these big inquiries where the government gets involved wrestling either gets shut down or it becomes a lot lot harder to to run shows and and they'll be like wrestling used to be regulated in many states new south wales included and and for a little while you you had to you know do a lot of things and then like you, you know be, be watched especially when i first started running shows but later as the years went on the the, the the sport and rank just didn't really care about it. It was kind of like the, the bastard son of, son of combat sports. So they just kind of didn't really bother with it. You know what I mean? They just kind of, ah, it's happening, you know, send your forms in and don't do anything stupid. But the idea was not to do anything stupid. And, and when the rise of a lot of that sort of hardcore stuff sort of flowed from Japan and came to America and then, you know, uh, via, you know, the way of tape trading and whatnot came to, to Australia, like some, some of the promotions started to, to want to do some stuff. And it, it actually, really got some wrestling in Australia like PCW uh, like a good friend of mine uh, or two, two, two good friend of mine's actually uh, uh, Lobo uh, who used to wrestle for, for the AWF actually the very first uh, AWF championship match uh, for, for the Australasian championship was myself versus Lobo in the final of the tournament so it's not the Lobo from CZW that you, you, you might be no, thinking. No, no, no. Lobo from CZW didn't have face paint. I'm trying to think the CZ the Lobo with you you from AW. He didn't have face paint. He just sort of wore a black and blue sort of outfit and had a, had a beard and long hair. But uh, ex excellent person, excellent, uh, you know, just high-risk wrestler, uh, loved, passionate for the, for, for the sport, the wrestling, respected wrestling greatly, loved to bleed. <laughs> he wanted to bleed a lot. Um, Bled a lot for his passion, but uh, yeah, uh, Lobo was uh, was one of the one of the best we had. You know what I mean? Um, it, it, it would would take in, insane, you know, crazy bumps. You know, I, th I think his last match was uh, uh, on a, a show on one of the international assault shows against the Dudley Boys, and he, he said he wanted to go out with a bang, and he got power bombed over the top rope, um, just onto the onto the ground, and that was the end of him. You know, he, he wanted to go out with a bang and. Um, it was it was at uh, a big, a big uh, the Melbourne Arena, sort of in his hometown. So, yeah, he, I mean, Lobo Lobo was great, but he, he he really had some great matches in AWF and uh, you know in Melbourne wrestling for for PCW. Like him and Mad Dog did this. Uh, 
uh, match, which was kind of like a, a barbed wire rope match, and uh, a bit of bit of media got involved, uh, and I think they made the they definitely made the papers um, uh, in Melbourne, and it, it, there was a lot of controversy about it. And then after that, some a bit of regular, like the I think the venue there, they're running at Roeville, got in a bit of strife, and and there was a lot of um, a little bit of backlash about it all. At, at I, rem- I remember, I remember that. That was. Uh... Yeah, like that, I think they bled on kids or something. Well, I don't know. Well, I, don't, like, I don't think they bled on kids. It was just bloody and violent and, 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 yeah. and a lot of people. Not, not bleed on kids, sorry, but I think there was a lot of people went into panic and, and even called the cops or something from what I, I – you probably know more than I would, but that that's what I, I – like I think I heard that someone – like they had the cops come to the event because they thought it was like turned into a shoot fight or something at some stage. I, I, I don't think they thought it was a shoot, but I, I think that yeah, possibly, you know, some people might have panicked um, and or, or just thought that it had gone too far and, and there was a, you know, there was hysteria about it and the, the papers did get involved and it was kind of like, you know, should this be happening? You know, is this, and, and you know, it's, still it's a, it's a question, like, really, like, legally, should this be able to be <laughs> produced? Like, can you, should you be able to legally, violently cut yourself up in public, you know, with, with, with you know, weapons? Um, it, it's, it's a moral yeah. question that, that's probably, um, if someone really wanted to legally go into it, it's, it's probably not really legally allowed, but... Yeah, um, exactly. Self-mutilating. You know, those guys were, Self mutilating essentially, absolutely, yes. And, and as we, we spoke before, like you know, you and I are, uh, were both big fans of hardcore wrestling and, and extreme wrestling, but as we got older, it's like, eh, yeah, obviously, you've been in the business for 25 years, I've never been in the business, but you know, even then, you know, you don't stay in the business for 25 years, you know, taking you know, uncalculated risks every single night, especially with, with stuff. Well, you, you, you just don't last, you know, like, like, like a lot of those guys that, that, that you know, have taken the meat, like even someone like we talk about Lobo, he, he's a great wrestler, he could have wrestled a lot longer, but, you know, his career ended 10 years ago because he could, you know, maybe maybe life, he didn't want to continue as well, but he, he was, he, he took a lot of big bumps and his body was in really bad shape. You know, like a couple of times I wrestled him and, and he, he, he would want me to give him these massive bumps and I'd sometimes kind of say to him, Henry, like, can we just do something a bit smaller? You know, like, I don't need the power bomb you over the top rope to the floor. <laughs> like, right, yeah. that, you know, we'd be doing the tables. So, like, we loved it. We, we loved it, but like sometimes it's kind of like, oh, is this the right thing, you know? And that, 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 that's the thing too, when you wrestle other people, like even if they give you their body, like for you to want to do that sometimes, if it's too crazy, like it, it's, a, it's a moral, like kind of tire. Yeah, sure, this is going to get me over, but, but big deal. Um, you want me to do it to you, but, but I, I don't necessarily feel comfortable. Like I can do it. It's, that's not a problem. You can do it. But, you know, if, if you do land on your head and, and die, like, <laughs> how, does, how, does, how does this play out? You know, like, like you know, it, it can happen. People have died in the ring, you know, and I, I'm not saying, uh, you, you know, it could be anybody, you know what I mean? Like, so, so they're, as, as a wrestler, especially as a trainer too, like yeah, over years, you know, when you wrestle for a long time, you mature a lot, you see situations come and go, and you're in these situations yourself through the years, you see other friends and other wrestlers that have been in the situations, you go, well, you know, if, if that smaller person's doing this thing to this bigger person up there and, and they don't really do it properly, the, the, the margin for error is, is a lot bigger than, you know, if, if it's the other way around and, 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 and he does know how to do it, you know, but even when it is the other way around and he does know how to do it, there is still that, that small freak chance that if, when he does that flipping thing off the top and he lands and he doesn't hold him properly, his neck will break and he'll be in a wheelchair, you know, and, and you, we've, we've seen it with, with, you know, true professionals like uh, Dilo Brown and, and uh, uh, oh, Darren Gustav, you know, the, just like the, the, the sit up sort of power bomb, sort of um, the low down sort of um, sit down slam power bomb, Dross was in a wheelchair, he still is. You know, like he never, he never got out of it. <laughs> you know, it, it continues on, and, and you know, people, you know, that there's a lot crazier moves than that going on these days. You, you know, you see these, you, you know, it's almost like a, a bit of a flipping pile drive and stuff like that. The, the, the Canadian destroyer, but but you know, like the wrong people doing that. Like 
if you've got two guys with, with you know, highly trained bodies and they're athletic doing it, but then you'll get like some guys that are, that are you know, new or, or just want to try it or whatever and, and they'll land it a couple of times and whatever, but then, you know, maybe they're not in the best shape and, they, and they'll do a match and they're, you know, you know, halfway into the match or three quarters of the way in the match or sometimes at the start of the match because there's psychologists all over the place, but, but, but regardless, and they won't do it properly and one of them will tweak their neck and, and they'll be screwed, you know, and, but it only takes that one person to, to, to do it even worse where they, where they don't just tweak their neck, but they break their neck. And then, then a whole bunch of wrestling becomes, uh, you know, like in, in question again, you know. And like we, we, wrestling's been one of those things. That it's, it's had so many, like, detractors through the years that anything else would have been shut down. And wrestling is, is maintained, you know. But but it, it, it sometimes could only take a couple of bad luck things in a row to happen for there to be a lot more, you know, eyes on it. Especially in a place like Australia where, you, you know, they want to, regulate stuff there's always some board wanting to get money off something that they can um yeah. it only take a few people to you know these these sports entertainer wrestlers that, that you know like that might fuck it up and and, and then then everybody's screwed you know or or it just becomes a lot harder and a lot more expensive to run wrestling and and, and that might be good for some you know like some of the more established ones yeah it gets rid of the, the thing but you know um it, it it probably becomes a lot more work and a lot more loopholes to jump through and, and it, you know it, it, it makes wrestling more expensive and difficult, which we, which we which we don't want. You know, we want we want people to to be able to wrestle if they want to, if they're good enough and they put in the time. But at the same same time, we don't want people that are just coming in here and and you spot know monkey, uh, wreck, wrecking it. Yeah, yeah. Well, not even just spot monkeys, just people doing things irresponsibly. You know, reckless. reckless. And and that's the thing. Like rec as you said, pro wrestling is you know. Just it, the slightest move of error, and you yeah, you, know, you can kill someone. And that's why what what you guys do, you are highly trained professionals in being able to do what you do. That you know, you take someone who's untrained, you know, they you know they don't know how to fall. That yeah, you know, they're going to either hurt themselves or they're going to hurt someone else. But you know, and especially you know, in you know, I, I think obviously you know. Australia and some of these smaller shows and you know a country like Australia as well like there is a lot of wrestling fans in Australia and, and a lot of young guys coming through as you see you know in in your training academy but where do you where do you see where do you see Australia currently with professional wrestling like professional wrestling Australia currently how is it now is it healthy obviously let's let's take away coronavirus right let's talk about professional wrestling in Australia coronavirus off the table how is it right now well right now before the claim it's okay you know there's there's a lot more wrestlers that are actually kind of okay now like there's there's probably i don't know maybe 30 or 40 wrestlers that could wrestle anywhere in the world which is yeah. good you know like there, there, there's probably 500 wrestlers i guess in australia maybe more maybe, maybe i'm underestimating the the numbers but 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 i guess like in in New South Wales, that have to be. Oh, no, maybe there are more than that. Even if, if in the in each major state there were like, you know, a hundred to, to two hundred sort of thing, guys that, that that know how to wrestle. Not all of them wrestle currently or, or, or wrestle all the time. But you know, like in Melbourne, there's about like, God, there's 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 got to be eight or nine feds in in Sydney. There's probably six or seven. Then there's you know, in Queensland, there's there's four, four or five. You know, there's one in Tasmania. There's one in Northern Territory, even though they don't have all their own wrestlers. So, so there are quite a few wrestlers. Some of them aren't as polished, or some of them aren't as good, or, or don't look as good, or, or whatever. But but there's there's a, a decent, you know, there's a decent chunk of guys that can wrestle. So so, you know, and there are a lot of shows that go on. Some of them pretty good. Some of them not so good. Some of them just exist. You know, there there are some places that. Um, need help. There are some places that are that do okay. Um, you know, I, I think um, I, I guess there's been a little bit more exposure for the for the wrestling in Australia. Like, there's a few promotions that that, that draw consistently, which is good. Um, you know, so I, I think it, it's better than it's been in past years. I, I think that sometimes certain people kid themselves a little bit with with the the, the numbers to, to, to think that it that's a lot better than it is like or that it's ever been like there, there have been times in, in australian wrestling where you know pre-internet i guess and pre 
their their existence for it, for you know how 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 healthy the Australian scene was, like Sydney and Melbourne. Um, I, I guess in in the mid eighties uh, through to the start of the nineties, but it was always getting good crowds to the, to the shows. But it was, it was different different world back then too, you know, like the 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 competition for like the, the the viewer was was a lot different you know what i mean like um th there wasn't as as much you know like pay tv and and video games and all that kind of stuff um you know at home entertainment wasn't as big it was kind of like oh the, there is wrestling we can go to it so so there was more i guess opportunity for people just to to, to want to go out and, and, and do stuff like that so it's it's a different world now uh, which i understand but but there there were times in australian wrestling where i think it was probably uh, like in the World Championship wrestling days, obviously where, where it was on TV and stuff like that, it was definitely bigger because they were doing thousands every every uh, you know weekend to, to, or every couple of weeks to shows when they did their tapings. But you know Sydney Stadium, the stadium, and, and the uh, in, in in Melbourne sort of thing. So and, and around Australia for that matter, you know. So, um, but 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 it's, de it's definitely there, there are a good crop of wrestlers. There, there's a bunch of guys that are really good that can you know main event shows anywhere in Australia um, and and can wrestle overseas in places like Japan. And as you see, like in in even the WWE system now, there, there's probably you know there'd be you know six or seven Aussies. You know, obviously Buddy Murphy, the the Iconics, um, you know um, Elliot Sexton, Jonah Rock. Um, yeah. Yeah, you know, Rocky. He's had a couple of good matches in NXT. Yeah, he's, he's a tremendous, tremendous person, tremendous wrestler. You know, he, he's great. He, he's uh, you know an Adelaide guy. Um, you know, wrestled for probably a decade now, and and uh, he's, he's, it's great to see a guy like that. You know, I've wrestled against him. He's, he's helped me with shows. Um, you know, I, I ran a I ran a show about two years ago, and he wrestled Christopher Daniels. You know, and, and I had a great match. You know, so. Um, yeah, ex excellent to see guys like that. You know, um, Shane Shane Haste uh, or Shane, Shane Thorne, I think he's in WWE. He, he's the, the, you know him and uh, um, Elliot Sexton are a tag team. Uh, I think they, they even appeared on Raw like the last week or two, which is fantastic. You know, um, you know in, in the past, you know, like I, I guess uh, Emma T uh, Tennille Dashwood is still uh, in, in Impact Wrestling. You know, there's uh, uh, like in Ring of Honor now, uh, Slakes and uh, Adam Brooks have kind of shown up. Uh, they may be back in Australia now because of the coronavirus, but that they'll, they'll they'll get a get a run again once the once the the world uh, kind of returns to semi normality. So yeah, no, the, the Aussies are getting out there. Um, you know, even over in England, uh, you know, some guys have branched out. You know, um, you know, in in other times, you know, like a couple of the wrestlers have gone to Japan and done done things here and there. Even recently, like one of the the young wrestlers from Melbourne has has been for DDT. Another friend from up in uh, up in the north of Queensland has, has did a DD two T tour as, as well. So yeah, you guys are getting out there and, and, and you know living the wrestling dream and, and going from place to place. Um, and yeah, yeah I, I think I think the scene is healthy. Um, it, it, it could could be better. You know, it could be better. But it could be worse. Like there, there's some great like PCW in Melbourne's got a great setup, a great venue. You know. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, in Melbourne again, MCW, uh, their Thornbury Theatre shows can can consistently, you know, get a good crowd and, and you know, um, you know, a bit a bit of buzz, which is good. Um, you know, every day they put some decent numbers in, in MCW from from what yeah, the, the bits it's, I've seen with the shows. I mean, they, they they seem to get a really decent crowd. A lot of lot of lot of lot of fan interest and a lot of lot of work in behind the scenes. I'm sure. You know, do you see Australian? Uh, wrestling to be bigger than what it actually is. Do you think it could be a lot bigger than where it is now? Yeah, def definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, definitely and, 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 and do you like? Do you think it could be that four, say, the top four promotions in Australia, right? So the top, so let's say, let's start at the top four or five. AWF definitely in there. But you know, do you see like the top five promotions in Australia coming together to create a super promotion 
to basically build something bigger or do you think that well, there's that, that well, there's well, let's just some of us work together anyway you know what i mean like some some of us you know some of their guys come over here and, and go over there like i do the supernovas every year and i kind of keep a keep a tabs on who the who the, the better wrestlers around australia and so not always all of them i, I have rest on my shows but i but i know who who's around and who's the here and there sort of thing so so there is a bit of a like in that regard a bit of a sort of you know some working together and, and most of the good wrestlers are friends or we kind of have been on the same shows together or through the years or, or just know like somebody that knows somebody that, that that's kind of you, you know had a good yeah. story about someone or whatever so, so it's, there's a good camaraderie in australia it, it, it's it, it really comes down to it i, I think that, that you know if there's someone with a good corporate sponsorship package and a good money and good you know whether whether like tv is a different thing now but, but it, it probably still wouldn't hurt like if there was something that was pushed like with with big promotion by a major station or, or even by a minor station but it was just really given some 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 oomph you know with a with a good you know budget for production and a good good crew like i, I we, we do i do believe that we got the the, the wrestlers here to, to to do a good show um you know and there, there's a few creative people behind the scenes that would be able to put it all together and, and you know i don't i don't you know i, I don't think that, that would be the problem it's just getting Getting someone to, 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 to want to do that, like the problem is WWE comes in with their packages and sells them to the to the stations and they go, okay, we'll give you five shows or six shows and it'll be this many thousand dollars to, 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 to run each week. Um, you can only run WWE wrestling and um, each show, you know, breaks down, it might only be, you know, a couple of thousand each show, but, but you do it for a whole year. So the thing is to produce a show um, versus that, it, it, it costs a lot for them to start it up or whatever. And sure, they might be able to own part of the promotion, or they might be able to own, get part of the merchandise or whatever. If they, they yeah. you know, that way, but it, it, it's still a lot start up comparatively. So they probably just guess, well, it's not going to look as good um, because they've got billions of dollars and they, they've just been doing it a long time. It, it can look, you know, a, a localized version. It can still be cool, but it's not going to look as good. And it's not going to have the, <coughs> the 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 polish, and it's not going to have the, the the people. Even though it's a localized product, they, they still come here. The WWE, so the WWE's got like you know a hundred years of fan base, <laughs> where it was anything that new is oh who are these new guys and there's going to be people picking at it. And it's it's it, 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 it is difficult. It's not impossible. Like on a mm. smaller scale, so like I've I've just started running my own little YouTube channel again. Um, this is AWF Wrestling. We've done three shows. Um, it's just small time stuff. I, I get it, but it was just to get the names out a bit more to get the get the people to know. And and it is you know I was asked a little while ago a similar question you know and I, it got me thinking. And 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 some people that are that like wrestling said, well, we'll just get some practice up and, and get that happening, um, and we'll see if, if if we can get you know some things going over the next year, and then we'll be in contact. Which is like great. Okay, well I'll I'll give it give it a, you know a couple of hours a week, and I'll I'll edit some of the matches together, put a, get a bit of practice on commentary, get a bit of practice on, on thing and, and, and try it for that. You know, that really, you say that wrestling's popular. It, it is popular at, at the moment more than ever. Like the, the amount of opportunities for Australians has been huge, like like we just mentioned. And even myself, I've had I've had offers that, that have been great, but I just kind of like to get away. Like even just now this coronavirus thing, I had something pretty, pretty, uh, it might have been the biggest thing I've ever been offered uh, to, to come up. I, I can't really speak about it right now, but because uh, it might still happen after the coronavirus, but it was supposed to be now, you know, and it's like, like all this thing is just like thrown it into like, oh, we'll push it back six months. And I don't really have time at, at my age sort of thing for an extra, you know, six months or a year with kids and all that. It's, you know, like I had this block of time planned to do stuff, but you, you know, like it, it, it is a, a really interesting time for Australian wrestling and it, it can go bigger. Um, and it probably will maintain, and, and, and there's a lot of wrestling that goes on. Like every weekend, there's, there's you know, four or five shows going on in Australia everywhere, but like on, on each day. So, so there's, you know, there, there's, there's in Sydney and Melbourne now, there's like a wrestling show on every corner every weekend. It's like, I, I can't run shows without another show happening that weekend or the weekend after. Like something like a couple of weekends ago, there was like four four shows on the same 
day. I was like, what the fuck is this? You know, like, <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is stupid, you know, like, yeah. and it wasn't because anyway, and I, I don't think it's guys going, oh, we're going to run. So they're like, if they are, they're stupid. Like you want to run yeah. on a different pace and you've got to, you know, but, but even so, a lot of the promotions kind of, they have their fans and they go to their show and they have their fans and friends that go to their show, you know, it would be great, you know, if, if, all those fans could come together for one show, but it's it's hard to work and it's hard for the I guess the people that are the in in charge to, to you know monetizing that split and, and what's what they think is value and what they other person thinks. There's a lot of you know small businesses running on their own formulas and and that works for them, but it doesn't work for them, and it, it's difficult to get it all together, you know. Or there'd have to be some big incentive that that everybody wanted that everybody can benefit from uh, to, for it to work. So it's, it, it is difficult. Like I've, I've thought of it many times, but, you know, I, I think what it, what will end up happening at some stage, someone will will have a bunch of money that, that knows what they're doing and has the, the, the TV station or the production company that's got the contacts to, to put it in a, in a major format somewhere. It, could, it might even still be on internet. It's a lot more um pool these days than you can imagine you know i, I went to here's a little thing like my, my son who's 10 years old he watches like internet tv shows and this kind of popped me the other day it, it, it was just like this it's called fg tv it's like a, a, a gaming show uh for kids and yeah. i went to kmart the other day um to buy some baby things because i got a, got a one-year-old uh, child and i saw these action figures and they were from this internet gaming show FGTV. I was like, what the hell is going on? That, that's that show <laughs> but it's just a YouTube show. It's not a it's not a TV show that I know of. It might be, but but yeah. it had action figures of this guy who's just a father that sits and plays video games with his kids and they put graphics on us and they had a whole range of action figures in Kmart. I was like, whoa, that's that's the, the that's how big YouTube and the internet is now. You know, oh. I'm aware of how big it is, and I'm aware of it. But, but just kind of that, just to see that, and it's like, man, it's not impossible, you know. But, yeah. Well, I mean, I got a four-year-old and a two-year-old, and my son is obsessed with with watching Ryan's World on YouTube to the point that if I sat him there in in front of the TV all day, he could sit there for twelve hours and legit just be like. And he, he like is legit. And this is like, he'll sit there and watch kids play with toys. I'm like, dude, like, let's just turn this off and go get the same toy and play with it ourselves. Dude, like, yeah, yeah. And, like and, and he's looking at me like I'm crazy. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, but look, I, I think, that, yeah, kids, I'm sure the shit that we did when we were younger was, was, was even crazier, but. You know, a and, few battles with those LJN figures, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. LJN, you know, WWF figures. <laughs> but uh, look, we've, we've been here for for an hour, and, and Greg, oh, TNT, you, you've been great to give us a bit of time, um, you know, to come on here. So where, where can people find you? Uh, I, I guess on, online, uh, my Facebook is probably my... Uh, most popular one, which is just TNT Greg Bounds. It's got B O W N D S. Um, I got there just about like three so because that one's pulled up to about five thousand friends, and that was that weird limit. So there's another one, just like TNT Pro Wrestler. Um, if you if you're keen, it's, it's pretty much all the same content, all of them. But uh, yeah, and then there'll be another one, which would be I think TNT AWF. Uh, owner, maybe. Um, I didn't create that one, but someone else created, it, and then I had to take it up because they were putting weird stuff where they, they just didn't want to do it. So it's like, oh, okay, well, um, so, so there are three Facebook ones out there that I actually kind of have a bit of uh, clout over. Then there's the uh, Instagram. It would just be like TNT Rest or Twitter would be TNT Rest. So I'm not such a Twitter face, but more of the Facebook is, is good. Um, or, you know, the, the Australian Wrestling Federation stuff, though, is, is, is important to me, like the, the YouTube channel. Uh, which is, you know, just uh, youtube.com slash AWF Wrestling. We're putting out the uh, This Is AWF Wrestling uh, sort of internet show every, approximately every two weeks. Um, you, you know, so it's, it's kind of been, uh, we're up to the third episode. We put 
to get in the fourth episode in, in the next couple of weeks. Um, just trying to, to, to keep something regular out there, just to, to keep fans updated with what's going on, what's going on show-wise, training-wise. We've got the Dream Camp, which is coming up in July. Uh, so that's a four-day wrestling camp for wrestling fans. Uh, you don't have to be a pro wrestler to do it. You could be someone that just wanted to, you know, a young person for 12 and up. It's a fantastic thing that we've run for years that uh, we try to run, run run one of those camps every year. And people people love it. You know, they, I've had people tell me it's the best week of their lives and all this kind of stuff. And, and they get photos. They get to hold the belts. Speaking of the belts, I got the, with the AWF tag team title here that me and... Uh, my buddy, uh, hell, you've been a, been a belt show that you are. It's the, uh, oh, we're, 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 we're not a belt show, but we do stream in a couple of belt groups. Wait, let's say that again. Uh, we're not a belt show, but we do stream in a few belt groups. Yeah, and for, 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 the, for the belt guys, absolutely. Yeah, the multi-continental uh, uh, belt society, we, we like that stuff. So, yeah, yeah, so... Um, yeah, lots, lots of uh, TNT stuff out there. There's the, um, as I said, the, the, the AWF, just the AWF website is awfwrestling.com.au. That's kind of like the home for, it's got like the training, merchandise there, the store. Um, yeah, th these times, if you can if you can purchase a shirt, you've got shirts like this, Respect Pro Wrestling. Um, you, you know, we've got a, got a bunch of other stuff. Some of the old school DVDs, uh, you know, we're going to be coming out. We've got, got the 20 year uh, celebration one from, from December that we're going to put out in the next week or so. We've got the artwork sorted, just the final touches on some of the, uh, on the match edits are happening at the moment. Uh, some of the, some of the old school AWF, uh, events are, are going to be coming out soon. I, I got uh, a couple of the old psychotic slam, the, the, the 10 year anniversary oh, show. Uh, which which will have uh, you, you got Al Snow coming on in a couple of days or so, so it'll have Al Snow versus yeah. Chris Masters from their match in Sydney. Uh, my match against Steel Cognito and Steel Cage is on that one. So it's a couple of couple of uh, like we, we've had some fantastic world class shows through the years uh, at AWF. And some of it kind of you know through times been buried or, or just through whatever whatever um, you know just to get it all edited in a, in a good format to have it in different places or it's been on DVD and the, the runs you know we're on a short runs of DVDs and they all got sold out so it was never re reproduced in mass you know uh, it was only kind of sold through our website or through the shows so yeah we were going to re-release a bunch of stuff that we, we know yeah we've got so many great matches that, that appeal to like people around the world you know like oh, we've had, had, had some amazing you know world-class wrestlers through the years guys that went on you know like I watched Sami Zayn versus uh, Daniel Bryan on Wrestlemania uh, two days ago, and you know, I've been in the room with both those guys, and, and Drew Drew Gulak was at ringside. There's another guy who I trained with as well, um, in, in Ring of Honor rings, and it was, it was kind of like, man, you know, all these guys have been, you know, around AWF have been in AWF rings, and uh, it's, it's such a cool thing to, to you know, to see them on the on the WrestleMania show, but but also just to to, to acknowledge the history of, of of you know some of these guys have been in in the rings that you know some of the new people that are going to come and train. Uh, will we'll be in the, in the very same ring, or, or, or you know, and be able to to carry on the, the the good work that those those guys and uh, have done on, on tours, or you know, the the, the main sort of uh, bread and butter guys that have, that have really paved the way for them, like people like Lobo we were talking about before, you know, uh, Il Cognito, Mark Hilton, the, the guys that, that wrestled, you know, sort of in the 2000s for AWF that, that really were, were excellent wrestlers that could, could have wrestled anywhere in the world, you know. Uh, right. These days, a lot of, lot of guys uh, that, that have been in AWF rings that in, in, the, in the last years too that are that are fantastic wrestlers. Like we, we just wrestled in Melbourne. We had uh, uh, JXT uh, wrestle Whiskey Six, which will probably be on one of the future This Is AWF Wrestling shows. Um, you know, the, 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 they they got great talents and, and, and you know such uh, good careers ahead of them. Both guys, you know. Then there's you know, a, a, a many, many talents all over Australia. You know, we go to Perth, we go to, you know, Adelaide, you know, there's there's guys like Rat Daddy and, and AJ Istria and, and, and the likes down there that, are, that are, can wrestle anywhere as well. And, you know, yeah. it, it's, it's, it's a fantastic scene in, in Australia and, and, and I really hope that it does kind of like mature and, and, and get a, a bigger following, not, not necessarily just internationally, but just locally. You know, my, my dream for wrestling is, is, is pretty much always been this to get a bit of respect for pro wrestling, um, you know, in Australia especially, for people to, to kind of care about it and, and to, you know, for it to be good. Like, 
and for people to come to a show like that. I, I've been to a few. I remember going to Dragon Gate and and being on some of the shows there and just just feeling the buzz of the crowd. And going, fuck, this, this is just like amazing wrestling and people love it, you know. And I've been to a few other wrestling shows, like New Japan shows um, in, in Japan a couple of times, and I was just like, man, the quality of the the wrestling, the people just looking at it like a sport style wrestling and just people loving it. I would love that to, to kind of translate a little bit more often in Australia. There, there have been times where we've got that feeling and got that emotion, but for it to be consistent and, and for, for a whole bunch of people to see it would be would be tremendous, you know what I mean, on a regular basis. Like, you know, the, the dream for me is, is okay, for, for wrestling to, to draw a thousand people, um, you know, every, every you know, month or whatever at a, at a venue around Australia and you know something it's about halfway there like there's you know four or five hundred or a few and it's always has been for the last 20 years you know it's, it's been you know but but getting it up to that thousand you know and I'm sure like there are these tours where the, you know 20 internationals are coming out and, and it's, it's it, it might get that but I mean just like with local guys you know maybe maybe one or two internationals to pop it now and again but with a yeah. base of guys you know it, it'll be fantastic you know um Lazar Lazar threw in a question Ollie just, just just to, to finish off, I don't want to don't want to forget his question. Right. Um, the, 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 yeah, like one of the wildest crowds that I've ever wrestled. Um, we, um, oh, there's another question there. Uh, I'm, sorry. I'm just trying to find it. I, I think he said something about wild crowds. It would be cool the history of Australia if we had our own a, a, a super promotion based here in Australia. Yeah, it would be cool, as it? it really would be cool. But yeah, you know, it, it takes a lot for that to happen, but. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see if it ever eventuates, you know what I mean? It, it, like with a lot of money and a lot of just like, I, I think the other local promotions would still exist, but, but, you know, maybe using their talents on, on a bigger show. Like back in the day, there was a couple of things called the Australian Wrestling Super Show, which kind of, you know, cherry picked a whole bunch of the, the, the better guys, but they worked with the promotions and, 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 you know, they acknowledged where they came from and who they are and, and did yeah. some shows and they, they actually were on Foxtel and they're, they're kind of a, a medium sized deal. They're a big deal for the local wrestling scene. So Thing, but we had a few people watching. There's, you know, like I said, there's 500 people at the shows, and it was, it was, yeah, they were cool. You know what I mean? Oh, um, yeah. And, and, but, and uh, sorry, yeah. what was Les's Les only question was something like the, the wildest crowd or something in, in Australia. Uh, like, mm -hmm. I, I remember we did we did one at, at Wollongong. It was um, it was like a, a rock and wrestling show with like some bands and stuff like that. And then it was at the, the closing of the uni, and uh, we, we mentioned Lobo earlier, but he he ended up jumping off a off a uh, off like a balcony with, with a leg drop through a table on Jason, oh. Horton, I believe it was. Um, then there was a, a bunch of other like there was like a battle royal and some some rowdy like fans got a bit drunk and tried to enter and uh i vaguely remember a, a singapore cane being used on one or two of the guys and <laughs> it did oh, to get out of there. um you know yes yeah, so, so they're, they're you know big seven foot thunder was there and he, he's ah, was, was really he's quite, quite intimidating and, and uh, mr big time john simmons or, or whatever name he was using at the time um uh he he, he was there um it's hard, hardcore superstar at, at the time. Um, yes, yeah, so there was a whole bunch of, bunch of crazy stuff going on in Wollongong at, at, at one one show, and you know, it was, it was over a thousand people too, which was which is a great, you know, like vibe for, for the wrestling and, and you know, people that were you know celebrating uh, the closing of, of their their uni bar or whatever. So they were they were having a few drinks and it got wild, you know. <laughs> <laughs> As every good wrestling show should. But, no, uh, yeah, it's on stage. <laughs> But guys, look, we, we are going to wrap things up. Uh, first of all, uh, TNT, thank you so much for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Uh, we do, we have to do this again. We do absolutely have to do this again and do a part two. Um, because I feel like we've only just really scratched the surface. But uh, guys, just want to say a special thanks to our sponsors, Signal Studios, uh, Air Rock Designs, and Mayan Belts. Uh, you know, and also, yeah, just to let you guys know, you can find me at Multi-Continental Wrestling Alliance. Um, I am the host of Shooting the Shit Uncensored, and tonight I've been joined by TNT, Greg Bounds. Thank you so much, uh, TNT. We, as I said, we will get you back on, and uh, hopefully we'll see uh, each other at an AWF show very soon. Sounds great, man. I'll, I'll see you soon, uh, Pierce. Uh, thanks for having me, man. No problem, man. Thank you, and uh, thanks, everyone, and uh, I'll catch you next time. Wicked.